Good day everyone! Today I'm going to discuss to you about sigma notation. At the end of this video, I'm expecting that you will be able to first use the sigma notation to represent a series, second, apply the use of sigma notation in finding sums. This is a representation of sigma notation. We can read this as summation of f of i from m up to n. f of i, this is what we call the summon, while m is what we call the lower bound, and n is what we call the upper bound. Let's try to use or represent a sigma notation in this problem. Find the sum of the first five natural numbers. If we're going to represent a sigma notation in this problem, it will be this one. And we can read this as summation of m, where m starts from 1 up to 5. Why? Because once said natural numbers, it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth and so on. Since we're looking for the first five natural numbers, it implies that the first five natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we're going to find the sum of the first five natural numbers, we can use this sigma notation, and then if we're going to expand this sigma notation, it will be this one. So we're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So instead of writing m, you're going to write 1. Since we're looking for the second term, so instead of writing m, we're going to use 2 or write 2. Now, adding all the numbers, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, and plus 5 is 15. So therefore, the sum of the first five natural numbers is 15. And applying the sigma notation, we can represent that as, that as summation of m, where m starts from 1 up to 5. There are also properties of sigma notation. The first property is this one. If we have summation of k a sub i, where i starts from 1 up to n, we can have this one. It can be k summation of a sub i, where i starts from 1 up to n. As you can see, your k is what we call the numerical coefficient or the constant term. Inilalabas lang po natin siya. Inilalagay po natin siya dito sa kabila. Let's now have an example so that it will be clear for you about this property of sigma notation. If the defined sequence is 5m, then find the sum of the given sequence if m equals 3 up to 7. If we're going to represent sigma notation in this problem, it will be this one. Summation of 5m, where m starts from 3 up to 7, then applying the property or the first property of sigma notation, it can be 5 summation of m where m starts from 3 up to 7. So, kung mapapansin po natin, yung 5, nilagay lang po natin doon sa labas ng sigma notation. And bakit po nagkaroon ng m equals 3? Kasi yun po yung condition. m is equal to 3 where 3 is the lower bound up to 7 where it implies that 7 is the upper bound. So, we will just simply copy the summation notation and then put 5 outside the sigma notation. So, if we're going to solve this one using the sigma notation or the property, it will be this one. Just bring down 5, then multiplying to m, where m starts from 3 up to 7. So, it implies it will be 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. So, nag-start tayo sa 3 kasi yun yung condition. And nag-end tayo sa 7 kasi yun po yung condition. Bakit? Ito lang yung nilagay natin kasi m lang po ang nakalagay dito. Pero kung m squared ang nakalagay dito, it implies lalagyan mo rin ng squared yung bawat number. Now, we're going to add 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 5 is 12, plus 6 is 18, and plus 7 is 25. So, 5 plus 25 is equal to 125. So, the answer for this problem is 125. And representing this using sigma notation, it will be summation of 5m where m starts from 3 up to 7. Let's try another example. For instance, our given is summation of 2i 
where i starts from 3 up to 6. So again, the first thing that we will be doing, ilalagay natin tong 2 sa labas. So it will be 2 summation of i where i starts from 3 up to 6. Then after that, we can bring down 2 and then we can expand summation of i where i starts from 3 up to 6. So it will be 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. So now, we're going to bring down 2 and then simplify 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 is 12 and plus 6 is 18. So 2 times 18 is equal to 36. So therefore, the answer for summation of 2i where i starts from 3 up to 6 is equal to 36. Let's proceed with the second property. For the second property, it will be summation of a sub i, so it, there should be parentheses, plus minus b sub i, where i starts from 1 up to n. Sa second property na ito, paghihiwalayin lang natin itong dalawang term, yung a sub i at b sub i, and then ikakapi lang po natin ang buo, itong mismong summation notation. So that's why, ito po yung nangyari. It will be summation of a sub i, where i starts from 1 up to n, plus minus summation of b sub i, where i starts from 1 up to n. Bakit po plus minus? Kung ano ang operation dito, yun din po ang operation na kukapiyin po natin. Kung meron pong plus dito, plus din po ang gagamitin natin. So kung mapapansin po natin, kinopya lang natin yung lower bound at upper bound on both terms. Let's try an example para po mas malinaw sa atin ang second property. If the de defined sequence is 7m minus 2, then find the sum of the given sequence if m equals 8 up to 11. So, ang unang gagawin po natin, we're going to represent this using sigma notation and it will be this one. So, it will be summation of the parentheses 7m minus 2 where m starts from 8 up to 11. So, kung mapapansin natin, we have two terms. So, paghihiwalayin natin yung two terms, so magkakaroon tayo ng summation of 7m, where m starts from 8 up to 11, minus summation of 2, where m starts from 8 up to 11. So, dito naman po, mapapansin po natin, sa unang term, pwede natin i-apply yung unang property. So, pwede natin ilabas yung 7 dito. So, dalawang property na ang pwede natin magamit. So, it will be 7, summation of m, where m starts from 8 up to 11, minus summation of 2, where m starts from 8 up to 11. After representing this using sigma notation, the next step is expansion. We need to expand the sigma notation. So, it will be 7, then, since it's m and m starts from 8 up to 11, it will be 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 minus. So, we have 2 minus 2. Since walang m nakasama yung 2, it implies, multiply lang po natin kung ilang term i-add si 2. So, we have 8 up to 11. So, bibilang tayo 8, 9, 10, 11. So, may apat na term. So, ibig sabihin, multiply natin yung constant term by 4. So, kapag may constant term tayo na kinukuha yung sigma notation or summation of the given constant term, multiply po lang natin yung constant term kung ilang term from the lower bound up to the upper bound. So, it will be 7 times 8 plus 9 is 17, plus 10 is 27, plus 11 is 38, minus 2 times 4 is 8. Now, ang susunod po natin gagawin, we're going to simplify 7 times 38, and 7 times 38 is equal to 266. So, we're going to write 266 minus 8. And 266 minus 8 is equal to 258. So therefore, the answer for this example is 258. 
And representing this using sigma notation, it will be summation of 7m minus 2, where m starts from 8 up to 11. And then you can use the second property. After that, you can use the first property, the on summation of 7m, where m starts from 8 up to 11. Let's try another example. So, for instance, we have summation of 2i plus 3, where i starts from 4 up to 8. So again, we're going to rewrite this using the second property. It will be summation of 2i, where i starts from 4 up to 8, plus summation of 3, where i starts from 4 up to 8. Now, since dito sa part na to, pwede natin i-apply ang first property, ilalabas natin yung 2. So it will be 2, summation of i, where i starts from 4 up to 8, plus summation of 3, where i starts from 4 up to 8. Now we can simplify this one. So summation of i, where i starts from 4 up to 8, can be written as 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Then plus, we're going to copy 3 since constant term lang to, kukopihin natin yung constant term na 3, i-multiply kung ilang term from lower bound up to the upper bound. Ang lower bound natin ay 4, bibilang tayo hanggang 8. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So meron tayong 5 terms. So from that, we can simplify 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 6 is 15, plus 7 is 22, plus 8 is 30. So we can have 2 times 30 plus 3 times 5 is equal to 15. 2 times 30 is 60 plus 15. The answer is 75. So if we're going to simplify summation of 2i plus 3, where i starts from 4 up to 8, the answer is 75. How about this one? Paano kung ganito yung ating given? So, hindi natin di tayo gagamit nung first at second property. Ang gagawin lang po natin, we're going to simply to expand this one. It will be this one. So, we're going to start with 2 sub 2 raised to i. Since ang i natin mag-start sa 0, so therefore, we're going to have 2 raised to 0. Plus, since ang kasunod ng 0 ay 1, it will be 2 raised to 1 plus 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 4, plus 2 raised to 5. Bakit hanggang 5 lang? Kasi 5 yung ating upper bound. So from that, we can simplify. 2 raised to 0 is 1. 2 raised to 1 is 2. 2 raised to 2 is 4. 2 raised to 3 is 8. 2 raised to 4 is 16. And 2 raised to 5 is 32. Now adding all the numbers, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7. Plus 8 is 15. Plus 16 is 31. Plus 32, the answer is 63. So therefore, we're going to simplify summation of 2 raised to i, where i starts from 0 up to 5. Ang gagawin po natin, hindi natin i-apply ang first and second property. Kailangan po natin isulat siya isa-isa. Sa substitute lang natin, instead of writing i, papagtang po natin siya ng 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so, kung may exponent tayo, bet, ganito po ang gagawin natin. Isa-substitute lang po natin kung ano yung variable na ginamit. And then, we will be able to simplify. For instance, we have this one. Summation of 3i plus 1, where i starts from 1 up to 25. So, Pangalawang property ang pwede natin gamitin dito. So, pwede natin siyang isulat as summation of 3i, where i starts from 1 up to 25, plus summation of 1, where i starts from 1 up to 25. Then, since dito sa part na to, sa unang part, pwede natin i-apply ang first property. So, it will be 3, summation of i, where i starts from 1 up to 25, plus Summation of 1, where i starts from 1 up to 25. So, since napakahaba nung um, i is equal to 1 up to 25, pwede po natin siyang i-rewrite as this. Bring down 3, and then multiplied by 
i, where i starts from 1. So, we're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and then 24 plus 25. Pwede po natin siya isulat ng ganito. Plus 1, since constant term to, copy the constant term, bilangin ngayon natin ilang term meron from the lower bound up to the upper bound. Since nag-start naman to sa 1, up to 25, therefore, there are 25 terms. So, we're going to multiply this by 25. Now, we're going to simplify 1 plus 2 up to 25. Para masimplify natin siya, pwede natin i-apply yung arithmetic series. So, for arithmetic series, meron tayong formula na S sub N is equal to N over 2 times A sub 1 plus A sub N. Ang N natin ay 25 kasi meron tayong, nag-start tayo sa 1 up to 25. So, we have 25 over 2. Ang first term natin ay 1 at ang last term natin ay 25. Then, we can simplify 1 plus 25 and that's 26. 26 and 2, pwede po siyang i-cancel. So, pwede siya maging 13. So, ngayon, ang gagawin ngayon natin, we're going to multiply 25 and 13. So, and the result is 325. So, we have 325 here plus 1 times 25 is 25. So, isulat natin is equal to 325. So, kung meron tayong napakahabang dapat i-add, Huwag yun na pong i-add isa-isa para hindi po kayo magkamali. Kasi pag nag-calculator po kayo at inisa-isa nyo tapos 25 terms yan, baka magkamali po kayo. Kung napansin naman po natin na nag-form ito ng arithmetic sequence, pwede natin i-apply yung arithmetic series para makuha po natin yung summation. Kung nag-form naman to ng geometric sequence, pwede po tayong gumamit ng geometric series. So from this, we're going to multiply 325 by 3. And the answer is 975 plus 25. 975 plus 25, the answer is 1000. So the answer for this example is 1000. Now let's represent series in sigma notation. For instance, we have 3 plus 10 plus 17 plus 24 plus 31. If we're going to represent sigma notation, tingnan muna po natin. Anong uri ba ito ng sequence? Kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong tinatawag na common difference. So therefore, ito ay nag-form ng arithmetic sequence. Kung nag-form ito ng arithmetic sequence, ito po ang gagawin natin. Kailangan lang po natin kunin ang common difference. To get the common difference, isusubtract natin ang first second term sa first term, and that is 7. So therefore, ang common difference natin ay 7. So, lagyan natin ng variable. So, pwede natin ilagay ay 7n. Kapag um, sinubstitute ko, or kailangan isubstitute mo yung n equals 1. If n is equal to 1, ang makukuha po natin, 7 times 1 is 7. Kaya lang, ang first term natin ay 3. So, yung 7, para maging 3, nagma-minus tayo ng 4. So, it implies na Ang gagamitin po natin the fine sequence is 7n minus 4. Ulitin ko. Kunin natin yung common difference na, ng given arithmetic sequence and the common difference is 7. So, lagyan natin siya ng n. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 7n. If n is equal to 1, kailangan mag-substitute lagi tayo ng n equals 1 kasi yung n equals 1 it implies the first term. Sinu uh, minultiply ko yung 1 sa 7 and the answer is 7. However, the first term is 3. Kaya kailangan mag-minus tayo ng 4 para mag-result sa 3. So therefore, kapag ni-represent natin ang defined sequence nito, it will be 7n minus 4. Try natin. This is the second term. So substitute natin ng n equals 2. 7 times 2 is 14 minus 4. The answer is 10. So it implies that the defined sequence is 7n minus 4. So now, pwede na ngayon natin isulat ang summation of the defined sequence 7n minus 4 where n starts from 1 up to, bilangin natin kung ilan from 1, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So therefore, the upper bound is 5. So ngayon, ang ating sagot is the summation of 7n minus 4 where n starts from 1 up to 5. Pwede po bang magkaroon ng ibang answer dito? Pwede po magkaroon ng ibang answer dito 
Depende kung anong value ng n ang isa-substitute nyo po. Okay? Let's try this example. Again, let's find the common difference. The common difference is 11. So, lagyan natin ng n, it will be 11n. If we substitute n equals 1, it will be 11. However, the first term is 12. So, para maging 12 siya, we're going to add 1. So, therefore, the defined sequence is 11n plus 1. Tingnan ngayon natin kung sa second term. Ang second term natin ay 23. So, 11 times 2 is 22 plus 1 is 23. Therefore, the defined sequence is 11n plus 1. Now, we're going to rewrite this in sigma notation. So, we're going to have summation of 11n plus 1 where n starts from 1 up to, bilangin ngayon natin, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, therefore, the upper bound is 4. So, now, the representation of sigma notation in this series is summation of 11n plus 1, where n starts from 1 up to 4. How about this one? Kung mapapansin natin lahat may a, nababago lang yung subscript 2, 4, 6, 8, up to 20. So it implies we have a sub 2n. Why is it a sub 2n? Kasi mapapansin natin na lahat ng subscript ay nakadivisible by 2. So, minumultiply lang natin siya sa 2. So, therefore, ang defined sequence natin ay a sub 2n. So, pwede natin siyang i-rewrite as summation of a sub 2n where n starts from 1 up to what? Paano natin malalaman yung n? Ang dulo ay 20 since ang defined sequence natin for subscript is 2n. So, let's now have 2n equals 20. Let's find the value of n. So, n is equal to 10. So, it implies a sub 20 is the 10th term of the given sequence. So, therefore, the upper bound is 10. So, now, ang ating um, sigma notation for this series is summation of a sub 2n, where n starts from 1 up to 10. So, that's all for today's discussion. Thank you and happy math learning. Again, kindly subscribe, like, and share our math tutorials. God bless everyone.